There haven't been too many prospects who improved over freshman year as significantly as Derek Lively did this year. He had that calf injury and got off to a rougher start, struggling to be effective in limited minutes, but he turned it around in a big way and was key in helping Duke become a very, very good team by the end of the year. As 7-1 with a 7-7 wingspan, Lively makes his presence felt most on the defensive end, serving as a top-tier rim protector and putting up some elite player impact stats. Now offensively, he's still a real work in progress, but he does have the tools to finish plays and overall just has a game that is proven to help teams win and it makes him a sought-after player. Lively is a big time rim protecting talent and in many other years he'd be far and away the best the class had to offer in this area. He's got the physical tools with the size, length and athleticism as well as the timing and feel to rotate consistently and just erase shots and serve as that last line of defense for a team. He did a very good job of staying vertical and contesting without wildly swinging his arms or chasing blocks by the end of the year and he of course changed a ton of shots along the way making opponents think twice about driving to the rim with him in the vicinity. He just turned into an unreal difference maker for Duke as the season went on, leading the country in defensive box plus minus and putting up black rates up there with the best defensive prospects that we've seen. And to sum it up, this is his elite skill and it checks out in every way that you want to look at it. Yeah, that's a uh, Fremantle with his first rebound and he's denied. Duke wants him in drop coverage. Underneath out of bounds play for Mitchell to be able to get it going and once again, two threes. Duke in assists, and he's going to be a really good player. Boy, another good pass from Lowe. For the move through traffic and a shot. Finds Davis. Davis into the chest of Lively. Game. They wanted to kind of get at him early and let their size go. School students were all former high level college. Very hot and very quick. That over inside. Malongo is blocked by Roach and goes by Lively. And can't get it. Filipowski's on Appleby. Hard cut off by Lively. Here is the freshman we spoke of a moment ago. Post a nice pass. Damar Langford on the drive. He had it in mind to pick his pocket. Here comes Appleby again. Oh, acrobatic. Thus far, North Carolina doing a pretty good job on the defensive glass. The emerging trend about why Duke is getting better. And Lynn Kidd. Kowski on him. There's a switch. Appleby dish. Give it in time. Sonano for the Hawkeyes. And Lively to eat. He's playing the shot. That'll rattle off the iron. Love doesn't get it. Lively the rebound. Another big part of Lively's defense is his pick and roll coverage. He's at his best in drop and it felt like he improved more and more each game in terms of his technique. He's still far from perfect, but he did a good job of containing and keeping things in front of him and minimizing angles for the roller. And of course was a shot blocking presence there at all times. He's mobile enough to play up to the level on screens and can stay in the vicinity of drives, which is key in managing against elite scoring and pull up threats. And then while I don't think he's a switch big, I think situationally and in a pinch he could get away with it. And he did have some great moments out there on an island. He's not the quickest mover, but can get the job done and contested well on the perimeter. Overall, the shot blocking prowess matched with the agility and ever growing pick and roll technique only add to his defensive impact and long-term upside at the five spot. Baycott spins. When I watch O'Meara play, you see that screen? He's been this size his whole career. He knows how to games to go. Jay Davis off the screen. Over. Proctor's a big kid, six feet five, really strong, but it's going to be hard to chase an ace with him. Davis tries to split. He looks like the, the coolest cat in the building. He's he? played a lot of high level basketball in his young career. Simply on the floor for a seventh footer. Here's the seven three Hanover. Getting the job done. This may not be the scoring team that you've seen from Duke in the past, but defensively. Duke, the last couple minutes, they have to kind of string some stops together now. Joseph, I should say, three in the clock. And finally, his third block. To get guys to come here. By the way, it shouldn't be too hard to recruit Miami. Good hustle. Firepower. But of course, Duke 
their defense has been good enough all year that they have played 34 games prior now. They've held 30 of their 30. Last year, big win around this time in Carolina. Perfect. Yep. He is 5 of 10 from the floor. Now, offensively, Lively is still a work in progress, but I do like the tools he has and his upside as a play finisher. He finished above the rim often, had over 50 dunks, playing in the dunker spot, serving as a lob threat, and having some good moments as a role man. He's a good athlete who's fairly explosive when given some space and is most comfortable off two feet, and has a great catch radius to potentially serve as a vertical spacer. He was also pretty active on the offensive glass, putting up an offensive rebound percentage over 12, and using his timing and athleticism to get several putback dunks. Now, long term, the vision for his offensive role isn't much more than what he's shown already. We'll get into some of what he'll need to do better, but there are enough tools there to potentially carve out a role as that play finisher. Blue Devils in white, the Hokies in the orange. Back door, Lively gets a start. They're good for 60 almost every game between them. I mean, they're unbelievable. Roach. Yes. Couture right now caught oh, on the full pass. Slip. from the corner. Roach. Weak side. Oh, crafty play kind of stopped in. Fighting Kyle Filipowski for that low post. Proctor, no. Lively. Roach defended by Nance. Goes by him. Now you probably wouldn't be able to tell just looking at the basic stats, but Lively was also a pretty good passer. He shined on short rolls, making quick and accurate decisions. He was a quick processor and unselfish on offensive rebounds and operated some in the middle of zones and in the high post. Now he's probably not going to be someone you're running your offense through or are relying upon to make plays, but this is an important piece for a big and he's shown flashes of it, which is positive because we've seen the opposite stand out for a lot of others. What do you think about, we talked about how the transition has been so offensive team. 11th nationally per count. Wide open Blakes. Lively the rebound, he'll kick it back out. Now getting into the improvement areas, Lively has a lot of work to do offensively. I think the first thing that stands out is his inability to finish or score on non-dunks. He shot 52% on layups, he currently lacks the touch to attempt push shots or score on jump hooks, and he was fairly non-aggressive a lot of the time. I like the offensive rebound kickouts, but sometimes in close you just want to see him go back up and take the points. Via Bart Torvik, there has never been a player drafted since 2008 with a lower usage percentage than he had. We're not looking for him to be this big time scorer because he's never really been that guy. It's more about being a threat and maximizing in his play finishing role and next to some high level playmakers in a 2023 spaced floor. I think it's within reason to add some of this and also improve upon some other technique stuff to find some more consistent offense. Now Lively kicks it out to Mitchell. Roach creates a little space. Lively secures the rebound. Grandison hits the Proctor. Lively. Proctor getting the start of the second half. In effect, the five man, although he's not really, but that means he's got to deal with Derek Lively the second. 
One of those spots is his screening and just rolling with a little more urgency. Now he did a lot of slipping or touch screening because teams would hedge or trap the guards and you gotta get out of there quick, but he'll need to make better contact, be able to flip screens and rescreen a little more accurately and learn how to use his size to free up space for others. We don't value it as much as we should, but it's probably one of the easier areas for him to make an impact offensively. I don't think he was terrible here, but he can still get a lot better. Spacing, it opens up the floor faster. Lively and one. Amazing in his leadership with these young guys. Talking to him on the bench. Now, a lot of attention has been given to his three-point shots since seeing his workout clips. And if you watched him prior to Duke, you know that was something that he has done and could potentially do in the future. And given some of his offensive struggles, being able to stretch the floor could be a real asset to his game, even if the touch and ability to drive or be aggressive on the interior doesn't fully come along. Now, it's still too limited a sample for me to be super confident in this right now, but this is an intriguing piece of his game and could turn him into one of the more sought after pieces in the league if he ever does it at just near a league average clip. And then finally, he's got to do a better job of staying out of foul trouble. It kept him out of some games and off the court in stretches. He averaged over eight fouls per 100 possessions. And for a rim protector, defending without fouling is of course vital. A lot of it had to do with body positioning and was less about him being super jumpy, trying to block everything, or consistently having poor timing around the bucket, which is positive. But it's for sure high on his list of improvement areas. And then you can make a note to continue getting stronger to handle NBA physicality, especially on the glass. I personally don't think that he was bad in terms of boxing off and helping finish possessions but there were a few times where he was moved around and gave up some easy ones but i think he's at a good starting point and will naturally progress over time really a three-point shooter mccaffrey will try one and around and out but a great job by murray to keep it alive and they got it lost it got it back they caught the rebound oh, drive look at poplar on the drive scoops it up and in. Well, what we've seen from rodney rice tonight's been impressive now for silly on the drive that's an off what Derek Lively brings is super valuable and I think best case he could be a high level starter as a potential top 60 guy and a perennial all defense candidate. Now his offense and the situation that he's in will dictate a lot of what he becomes but he has the potential to make a real impact. In worst case I think he's a backup big maybe a spot starter in a certain situation. He'll have interest as high as the late lottery into the early 20s with some of those teams being a Dallas. 10 could be too high but he fills a major need and could pair well with Luka. I think New Orleans would be interested in having a shot at an ideal center you want next to Zion, especially if you think that he'll shoot. And then after that, I like Portland, but they're at 23. LA is interesting, and I'm undecided on OKC with Chet as a focal point, but they're in the mix too. There isn't a comparison I really like for Lively right now if you're accounting for the shooting upside, but I think Tyson Chandler is a high-end outcome for what he could be. Of course, if he shoots a three, that'll be a different player. But you could also see some similarities to a Mitchell Robinson, a Rob Williams, and a few others in some ways as well. Derek Lively's turnaround this season was really impressive to watch and he proved himself to be a potential elite defender at the NBA level and someone that can change games on that end of the floor. Now offensively there's a lot of work to do but the path is clear and laid out for him to be successful and for all that I think he's got a great chance of being an effective and winning player.